my nine years old is waiting out there. <laughs> I, I don't know what this I is. I thought I did. Okay, but then you can wait. Yes, they're waiting out there. Does he vote? <laughs> <laughs> and then the question is, uh, my observation is that you don't connect very well with uh, Taiwanese women who lead a traditional life. They have a family to care for, and you don't have a family to worry about. And, and they, uh, a big part of their family life is children, and you don't have any. And how would you respond to their concern? How do you let them trust them? You share their pain, you share their their thought. If, if I make decisions or policies only uh, 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 depending upon my own feeling, then I'll be a very bad leader. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a lot of policy makers helping me to make a relevant policy. And one of the best uh, is the policy makers in my team in the uh, women rights area is actually a man. <laughs> um, the other thing is that I have quite a number of people working with me on day-to-day -day basis. They are young mothers, uh, they are older mothers, um, but um, they um, we have a day-to-day -day working relationship and sometimes we meet together and we have a frequent conversation. Uh, the kind of feelings they thought, um, I'm sure I can get as well. So um, if you rely on your feelings to make a national policy, <laughs> that's pretty risky. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have one more sequence of three. Just this afternoon, Mr. Sumi does declare that we will join the president election next year. What do you what do you think about this person? And I want to know how much this affair will affect you. Sorry, I'm, I'm from China. Sumi is going to join the race. <laughs> and this is announcement. Uh, is announcement made? We got press letters here. Um, has the announcement been made? No. So, um, shall I say I'm not supposed to answer? Have a second. <laughs> That's the <for> professor. <laughs> My question is that uh, he, uh, what would the EPP do if uh, and when the KMT loses the upcoming presidential election and the declines to accept defeat? Uh, they did that in 2004 when Sun Sui Bang was uh, re elected and uh, when they were out of power. And uh, it's a distinct possibility that uh, they would do it again now that they have power. And what's even worse is that, uh, that I mean, the PRC might intervene and might help the KMT. So my question is that, uh, what would the DPP uh, do and deal with uh, such a disastrous situation? Well, uh, people, uh Talk about this possibility. I'm not a lawyer. Well, people talk about the possibility. It's a matter of how um, um, big or small this uh, possibility is. Um, 
of course, I can um, not rule out um, the possibility outright, but I tend to think that given the maturity of our democracy and also the sophistication of the voters and the citizens there, the possibility is rather small. But it's just that people have to pay attention to it and to ensure that there will be a smooth transition. And it's everybody's responsibility in Taiwan to ensure that there will be a smooth transition. It's a hard task. Thank you. Dr. Tai, <laughs> thank you very much, this year of speak. Uh, I no question. Today I have a, a write a paper as a slogan to you. In 1998, uh, I went to uh, Taiwan. In 2018, I went to Taiwan again. So the 10 year I compare with the mainland and the ma uh, Taiwan. Uh, I, I, I opinion you write is a paper as a liberty give you maybe uh, no time to uh, uh, answer the question answer the paper but I won't give you a small lift you thank you <laughs> but one more question. <laughs> Um, I can only attend one session this afternoon. I chose to come here because I'm eager to see the new faces of the future Taiwan's potential leader or the president. And I grew up in Taiwan. I was born in the 50s, so far one of the uh, baby boomer. And I came to the state in the late 70s and naturally become a US citizen. And we observe uh, apparently, we all love Taiwan. Taiwan is beautiful, and beautiful people. All the Taiwanese pride and image all over the world. So we all acknowledge that. But in the same time, unfortunately, the image changes, and we feel I personally feel there's too much politics, too much you know sort of. Uh, um, Besides Zhao Jing or the just with the with the with the power or with the political uh, ideology, whatever, we know that we see China rising. In the same time, America is struggling, stumbling a little bit with the globalization of the economy, the uh, climate change, and the, and the, and, the, and the wealth definition between also things. Throughout the world, every nation probably is facing and dealing with the, the same challenges. We, we, I want Taiwan to continue to be peaceful, stabilized, and prosperous. So I really want to see the politicians, regardless of size, they work together. Because more and more I heard from you, I admire you a lot. Because we see a success of the democracy of sustain and live in the 21st century. This is such a valuable model to show the entire world of Chinese people and, uh, and, and every other country. We want to whoever the future leader in Taiwan has said, I heard from you that you want to continue stable people relationship. We the rising China is an opportunity, not a threat. But I often wonder why people on Taiwan hate each other when they talk about politics. Okay. <laughs> Alright, next. Alright, sorry. Okay, I'll talk to you. I have friends from, I friend, American friends, Chinese friends. You know, people I play with. Why do people on Taiwan hate each other? Taiwan politics are rough. <laughs> well, um, How do you feel about it? <laughs> yeah. I, um, well, um, I am not a very experienced politician. <laughs> I'm only in politics for um, less than four years. Uh, I think 
and the, and, uh, the, the chair of the DP. That's the real part. Um, this is a question. Why do you hate each other? Let me put it this way. It's, it's over competition. Um, and the market is a big problem. When the market is a big problem, uh, you tend to over compete. And, and then uh, you, you, you have bad feelings about uh, your competitors. But I think things are changing now. Uh, in this time, when we're running the campaign, we're trying to shift the focus to uh, politics rather than politics. Um, and, um, and I think, uh, gosh, uh, to my surprise, and, and this is really a pleasant surprise, that when I was talking about 10 years uh, policy platform, I thought nobody wants to listen to me because I talk like a professor. But <laughs> society listens. And uh, my angel is going to announce uh, his own 10 year plan, uh, the golden 10 year plan. And no matter what that golden 10 year plan, uh, no matter what that is, uh, I can make an effort um, to sometimes copy me. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it was good. So, so um, the um, the competition now is more. I hope it will continue to be this way. So it's policy driven rather than politics driven. And and if we're successful this time, it will be a major, major development and improvement in our economy. And we will take each other. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all. It, it was a good meeting, a good discussion, and uh, now uh, we're going to give uh, Dr. Tsai a break for about 10 minutes before she goes on to another, another venue. Uh, thank you.